Hello there, I'm Leo Waldock for Kit Guru, and we're going to have a quick recap of the MSI GS30 Shadow with Gaming Dock. GS30 is the laptop, Gaming Dock is this huge great box over here. MSI has taken a really straightforward, simple question, uh, which is this. How do I take a 13-inch thin and light laptop and make it play games properly? Uh, the reason it sounds simple is because we go, well, it's got a Core i7 processor, 13-inch uh, screen, full HD resolution, 1920 by 1080, 16 gigabytes DDR3 RAM, uh, SSDs in RAID, everything you want. Uh, why can't I play games on this any settings that I like? And the answer, of course, is graphics. It's as straightforward as that. The graphics in this particular laptop are the integrated Intel graphics. Uh, which come with your Core i7, and as we know, they can't pull the skin off a rice pudding. You can play um, videos and such like, do most everything you want, but you cannot play games. That's the one thing. So the simple question is, how do I take this laptop and make it play games? Uh, now, it's impossible, and the, the two uh, points that are related here are power and heat. The uh, power brick that powers this laptop is this little fella here, which is about a 65 uh, watts unit. And as we know, gaming graphics require more than that. Your GTX 970 or 980, you're talking a couple of hundred watts of um, full juicy power. So, uh, all right, you feed it more power to feed a chip. And we're forgetting money, taking money completely off the table. Uh, then the problem, of course, is the chassis has to get rid of a load of heat. If you had in the years to come a theoretical little thumb-sized dongle you plug in, which has got your graphics chip and it produces, you know, three watts of heat or whatever it might be, this is, ceases to be an issue. But right here, right now, it's just impossible because this thin and light chassis cannot get rid of the heat that is uh, an inevitable consequence of a beefy, process, uh, beefy graphics chip. You also get into design uh, factors because instead of having a cooling solution for your processor, you have to have dual cooling solutions for the processor and the GPU. But we've seen this a gazillion times, so we know how it goes. Thin and light, uh, not a lot of grunt. Uh, on the other hand, big beefy 17-inch fella, nice and thick, loads of fans, works like a dream. So MSI says, how do we make this play games? And in and of itself, you can't. So then the kind of associated question is, well, all right, then how do we add proper graphics to it? And the answer is gaming dock. So you take your thin laptop, which uh, has its ports and connectors on this side here, card reader, USB 3, HDMI output. So you can output to your TV to watch movies and such like, uh, Ethernet power jack. And on this side, we have the uh, exhaust port for the processor, we have a USB 3 and we have headset jack. On the back, we have this little slot here, and this is the uh, meat and potatoes of this particular gizmo, because that's uh, kind of a PCI Express uh, output. If I now slide the gaming dock across, big box inside graphics card, so we've got uh, grill for airflow there, we've also got USB 3, uh, Ethernet, headset jacks, so kind of uh, mirroring the ports and connectors we've already got. On this end here, we've got uh, the outputs from the GTX 980 graphics card, obviously an MSI graphics card, which consists of your usual, let's just double check, yes, three display ports, one HDMI and a DVI. So if you want VGA, frankly, you're out of luck. Uh, this uh, sort of carriage here is where the laptop uh, sits. And then you slide this lever here and that goes kolonk and engages the PCI Express and basically switches you over to using uh, the governance here. Obviously you do this with the laptop turned off and you'll notice there's a power connector on the end. Um, and then to release it you unlock and slide it forward. Quite straightforward and works absolutely flawlessly as you'll see. Um, let's just take a quick look inside the gaming dock because that I've uh, removed a few screws. Off comes the front, which uh, contains uh, speakers uh, down the bottom. And uh, I've taken out a piece of tinware that uh, just guides the cables to keep them away from all the nastiness. And what you'll see is that essentially you've got uh, a drive bay, a power supply, and a graphics card. Um, and a sort of a tiny motherboard, which uh, essentially acts as an interface. So you can uh, output from the laptop to the gaming dock. And that is the principle behind this setup. Uh, it's very straightforward in a way. I'm quite sure there's been some clever engineering along the way. But 
That is how you make a thin and light laptop play games. Basically, you add a, a block, which is you know, twice the size almost of the laptop. Um, but this is the mechanism for adding a gaming graphics card to a thin and light laptop. Uh, I can't say it's particularly elegant in terms of styling and appearance, but the idea you leave all this bulky stuff at home, head out for a work or college or whatever with your laptop, when you get home, plonk it on the dock, boom, suddenly you've got basically a PC. Um, the one slight curiosity is that the uh, drive bay there uh, had a hard drive uh, when we saw this uh, unit in preview and they've now removed it because they bumped up the um, uh, SSD uh, inside the laptop. So it's not strictly necessary, however, it would be nice to see a few terabytes of storage. After all, if this is going to kind of mimic a full-on hardcore PC gaming laptop, thin, yes, everything, all things to all men, then a few terabytes of storage wouldn't go amiss, but uh, let's, let's put that completely to one side. So there we go. This is what uh, it looks like inside your gaming dock. And I just want to explain the clutter before I go any further. This is a microphone shoved in here, so when I turn everything on, you can get some ambient sound levels. And that tripod behind me is a camera looking at this screen, so when I turn it all into life, fire it up, you can see what's going on. So it's a little bit more cluttered than usual in here. Now, you may recall at the end of November of last year, so we're going back a couple of months, uh, I did a preview of the GS30 Shadow with Gaming Dock. Um, and I was expecting the launch in January. Uh, that clearly didn't quite happen. It is now available for sale, however, in the UK. And I didn't know how MSI was going to change the GS30 Shadow and Gaming Dock between the preview and launch. Uh, so I held back at the time. I could have kind of done a sneaky video back then and had it ready for uh, when the launch came along. But I was actually expecting it to change, not dramatically, not in any radical way, but I thought there'd be changes here and there that would render the whole thing useless. So I'm somewhat kicking myself. It turns out actually the hardware we saw in late November of last year has changed very little. Um, as far as I can see, apart from the fact I've been sent a rather cleaner version this time rather than one that obviously done the rounds of all the shows, uh, the laptop now has 16 gigabytes of DDR3 in it in dual channel, uh, whereas previously it had 8 gigabytes. Uh, just check, I'm not talking complete rubbish there, that's correct, yes. Previously had 8 gigabytes in single channel, which struck me as a bit peculiar at the time. It's now got 16 gigabytes in dual channel. So that's easy peasy, isn't it? Plus, of course, you can't see the difference. Um, the other thing is that the gaming dock, which uh, contains a GTX 980 graphics card, um, it had at the time a 500 gigabyte hard drive to give some additional storage to the SSD in the uh, uh, GS30 Shadow. Uh, that hard drive has now vanished. However, the two SSDs uh, total uh, 256, sorry, it's two times 256 gigabyte. Before, in the preview, we had 2 by 128 so it totaled 256 and there they added the hard drive to give it some extra you know, uh, capacity. Now we've got two 256s in RAID 0. Um, and they've split them to two slightly curious uh, drive capacities, uh, drive C 186 gigabyte and drive D 156 gigabyte, uh, um, 2, 3, 30, 3, 40. Uh, I'm not sure those maths even work out. I think there must be a hidden partition going on there somewhere. Anywho, so there are two M.0, uh, M.2 M uh, SSDs in RAID 0. Um, that is the storage, no hard drive. Uh, so basically the gaming dock is a graphics card and then we've got various ports, USB and also Ethernet. Uh, right, I'm just going to be silent for a moment and then I'm going to turn the thing on. Just so you can get an idea of the background noise here, is like it's quite a quiet room. And now we turn it on. And as it works into life, what we've got is two things going on. We've got the uh, power supply in the gaming dock, and we've also got the graphics card. Now, obviously, as we know, graphics cards, once the thing fires into life, they're, um, they're not especially noisy. Oh, good, okay, that camera can see we've now got the Windows desktop. And it's all loading nicely. Good, that's fine. Um, what you don't have at the moment is any sound from the laptop itself to speak of because the uh, processor and the Intel graphics, which are disabled at this stage in the game, the processor is essentially idling. Now the processor got up to about 70, uh, sorry, up to about 50 degrees when it's idling, perhaps 60. Um, when it's under load, it gets rather warmer than that. And then the cooling fan, which is around here, um, starts to shoot out uh, air. Right, let's just open 3D Mark. 
which obviously you can see on this camera here. And let's just fire on Fire Strike Ultra. Oh no, that's a bit cruel actually. Let's go for Fire Strike Extreme. So what we have here is a thin and light laptop with a 13 inch screen which is disabled. So I'm outputting to this uh, 23 inch panel uh, which is uh, full HD. I've got GTX 980 uh, graphics. It's a desktop graphics card, not M, but desktop with four gigabytes of memory. And the processor is the Core i7-4870HQ, which is a 2.5 gigahertz turbos to 3.7 gigahertz. So if we take those things in combination, desktop graphics, laptop processor, the proper laptop processor, 16 gig DDR3, full HD. And then when we start running Fire Strike Extreme, and I'll be quiet while this happens, just so you can hear the sound levels. I mean, it's not extraordinary, I just want you to actually get an idea what it's like. So there we go. So now it's humming away, and at the moment I can hear the CPU is not um, kicked into life particularly, because this is obviously a graphics test 3D mark. So the graphics card and the power supply, basically when you're gaming, this is the sound level that you get all the time. Um, and it's not bad, if you're wearing headphones you won't have a problem, I shouldn't think you'll even notice this is actually happening. Uh, it's Other people in the room on the other hand I think will be less impressed. However, the gaming experience is absolutely sublime. This is a Core i7 with GTX 980 desktop graphics. And now the laptop cooler is spinning up. Yes. Uh, the thing is that the cooling in this, it ejects the heat the one way only. We've got some ports and connectors on this side. We've got um, HDMI output, Ethernet, and power brick, um, and a USB and a um, card reader. Uh, so this is the uh, exhaust port for heat. But of course, Intel graphics generate almost no heat at all, so it's purely to cool the CPU. Uh, however, the CPU cooling is that thin and light thing. It's a proper cooler in a thin chassis. Sorry, it's a proper CPU in a thin chassis. So the cooler does have to work for its living and the processor is being worked hard because of course the graphics can take all the processing that the CPU can handle. Um, right, let's just escape out of that. And there we go. And then we'll just shut that down. I'll close it down. Um, so obviously the concept, as we explained in the preview to um, the GS30 Shadow and Gaming Dock, is that you have a thin and light laptop, like so. You take it off on your travels, and it does all your laptopy sorts of things, all your reading of the interwebs and uh, spreadsheets and so on. Uh, it's a nice little laptop. Uh, does the job. They've gone from matte black, sort of slightly uh, rugged, sort of military sort of look to it, but then we expect that from MSI. And then, of course, the idea is you come home, you put it on its dock, you slide the lever, and then you press the power button on the side, and you're good. The, um, when I was using this, I found one or two minor annoyances, purely to the familiarity, which is that when it's on the dock, you have to use Ethernet port that's in the dock rather than the Ethernet port that's on the laptop, for example. Um, certain functions pass over to the um, to the other unit. On the other hand, uh, you can use either the power button, if you lift the lid slightly on the laptop, you can use the power button on the laptop, or you can use the power button on the side. I mean, not this big deal either which way. Uh, it's just a getting used to a slightly unusual concept, but the hardware works well, no two ways about it. Um, if the question you're asking yourself is, how do I make a thin light 13 inch laptop play games on a full HD screen with proper desktop graphics, this is, it certainly works, no two ways about it. Let's talk money. When I previewed uh, the GS30 Shadow and Gaming, lap, uh, and Gaming Dock, I thought it would be about £1,900, which struck me as being a fair amount of money at the time, and I broke this down like so. 1200 for the laptop, the gaming dock itself 300 for the box and for the ports and so on, the fact they actually had to develop the interface between the laptop and the uh, gaming dock, and then £400 for the graphics card, obviously it's an MSI GTX 980. So that's 1200 300 £400, £1,900 in total. Uh, the unknown there obviously is the price of the gaming dock, clearly they have to develop the thing and they don't know how many they're going to sell. But the principle seemed to me to be fair, and a thin and light laptop with a proper Core i7 but Intel graphics for £1,200, yeah, all right, fair enough. Um, it's a nice enough laptop, uh, and it does the job. 
However, the price is actually £2,195 in the UK, £2,200. And as the graphics card hasn't changed and as the gaming dock is an unknown, that either means the gaming dock is in the order of, what, £700 for the empty box with the ports and connectors, or it means the laptop itself is more like £1,500. And that strikes me as um, steep. Because the thing is, if your question is, how do I add proper desktop graphics to a thin light laptop, which is clearly impossible. Um, then, of course, apart from those, you also need an external monitor, so you have to factor in 100 plus pounds for that. Um, or your TV. But the thing is that there's another way of, of uh, getting around that particular problem, which is you buy yourself a relatively basic Core i5 thin and light laptop. It probably won't be truly thin and light. It'll be more like a 15 inch model. And um, MSI has got stacks of those in its product range. So you could go for a 15 inch Core i5 laptop, uh, which is no great amount of money. I think they're in the order of, sort of start about 700 pounds. And then you could get yourself a proper gaming laptop, 17 inch screen, which is going to have uh, GTX 970 or even 980 graphics. Um, now they're more expensive, admittedly. There you're heading up towards the, you're past the 1500 pound mark. Uh, however, if you add together those two laptops, 2200 pounds. So two laptops that will do more or less what this clever device will do. Obviously, it does not give you that same performance. It doesn't give you a 13 inch thin and light. It's somewhere between the two things. But it does seem to me that it means that this isn't quite the answer to that particular conundrum of how do you play proper games at sublime uh, settings on a thin and light laptop. Uh, because if the other answer is will you buy yourself two laptops from MSI, both of MSI quality, so you can buy yourself a high-end gamer 17 inch and you can buy yourself a more portable 15 inch then for the same money um then that strikes me that msi has slightly missed the mark if msi can get the price back down to 1999 or even 1899 then it strikes me that this has got a distinctly strong market among people who want a sort of two-in-one hybrid at the moment it's steep that's a, that's an expensive uh, gadget i do like what they've done with it i'm not mad keen on the styling because the gaming dock is a bit on the crude end of the scale and also the cooling it's it's not ideal it, it is noisy because you've got the power supply you've got the graphics card and when the uh, cpu starts working hard you have the cpu cooler as well so you take those together that gets a bit vexing but the other aspects of it, the 16 gig of memory, DDR3, the RAID 0 M.2 SSD, that's all good stuff. The screen, the keyboard and so on and so forth, um, which again, I ran through these in November. None of that, as far as I can see, has changed. The MSI gaming features, they're all good. Happy with those. Um, so I suppose my biggest issue, apart from the slightly crude styling, is, um, is the price. However, as a technical tour de force, the interface between the laptop and the gaming dock works very well indeed and the gaming performance is out of this world. So well done MSI, please get the price lower. This is Leo Wardock for Kit Guru.